welcome to this latest market update with me, Andrew Dawkins from ARD Consultancy. So August is normally a quiet month historically, but uh, this time around it's actually had quite a bit of excitement. Uh, starting off though with the fixed interest sector, the sector's uh, again awash with cash from all the money that's been pumped into the markets from governments and central banks worldwide. So uh, actually a, a fairly steady and uh, uninspiring 0% return on the funds uh, within the fixed interest sector for this month. And uh, probably that will continue to be the case for, for some while now. Um, looking at property, so commercial property this is, and it's been a, a good month for, for property. A lot of markets starting to reopen and uh, buildings getting getting used again. Good rental income yields as well have, have been established throughout the world. So uh, really sort of positive for, for this side of the uh, sector. Moving into the to the UK, so so what a great month August was for our UK equity funds. Some really good strong returns from uh, most of the holdings that we have, and in fact the smaller UK fund has actually outperformed all the other funds over the one year period, five year periods, and now ten years period. So it's the one of the best performing sectors in the world from all the funds that, that we use. So great returns there. Uh, probably the UK coming out of the pandemic. Uh, quicker than many of the developing economies and doing very well as, as a result of this. We've still got challenges with uh, logistics and uh, shortage of personnel in key sectors, but this is quite uh, encouraging though because it shows that there's great demand. So that the UK is uh, it's, it's doing really, really well. So we're very pleased with the, the, the UK performance. Looking at uh, Europe, uh, another good steady month for, for Europe. Again, some, some great re returns from some of the companies that we hold. And very good consumer growth and spend expenditure. The European Central Bank is continuing to pump in billions and billions of euros per month to support the market, probably to get to the stage where is, is that really needed? And it's started to distort various uh, sectors within there, so perhaps uh, I need to, to pull back on that. But certainly at the moment, uh, the, the companies that we hold and the funds that uh, we have in, in Europe are doing very, very well. Really, the, the sort of steady eddies, I think, over the last year or so. So uh, a, good, uh, a, good, a good month for Europe. Then we cross over to the US. Again, uh, a very good time in the US, up again. And uh, we're seeing a growth of almost 4% in the month. The Federal Reserve is continuing to, to pump money into the market in a big way, but has uh, said that they'll start to taper this off over the coming months or so providing less support to markets, which it is probably about time to. Um, the trillion dollar expenditure for in infrastructure bill got passed, so that will uh, start coming to fruition now. So big capital expenditure programs planned in America, which will help those construction companies and their supply chain deliver good returns. So uh, very good from the, the US and expected to be so for the, for the next wee while. And then finally moving over to the, the Far East and uh, this takes the top spot for this month's performance with an impressive 7% return. Some great results from uh, many of the big companies that we own shares in. We, we're not heavily involved in the Chinese market and the Chinese market is a bit of a setback with the way that the government there is now clamping down on various sectors such as education and gaming which has had a, a big impact on some of the big uh, Chinese stock prices. Um, thankfully, we, we don't hold any of this stock and we have very little within uh, China, but we do have a, a exposure to, to other parts of the Far East and these companies have done very well. Consumer expenditure is up generally, although, uh, as we've said now for the last uh, two or three months, the COVID-19 is still a cause for worry as the number of cases increasing dramatically and uh, this is probably one of the things that's uh, holding holding back momentum plus political tension around the far east as well is is, is not adding to to to, uh, to to the to the good news but despite that uh, a great a uh, great month for our far east funds so uh, all in all uh, august has been uh, an, an exciting month for, for making money and I think it's, uh, especially if we've got the, the equity holdings uh, high, there's good money to be to be made, good returns, and uh, a very busy August, uh, which is very unusual, but welcome.
now we have the portfolio performance for the month of August. The cautious portfolio this month has yielded 2.41% growth and over a year 13.44% growth. Balanced portfolio over the last month has grown by 3.14% and over the year by 18.81%. Our capital growth portfolio this month has grown by an impressive 4.07% and over a year by 24.71%. And finally, our aggressive portfolio this month has grown by 4.8% and over the year 30.31%. I think that's the first time in a very long time we've seen growth in excess of 30% from any of our portfolios, so an outstanding return there. So what do we expect for the next wee while? Well, I think, uh, as we've already said, the fixed interest market is going to continue to be under pressure. Uh, we'll probably start to, to see better returns going to next year as the uh, relief from central governments and banks worldwide starts to be taken away. So fixed interest is one of those uh, asset classes we've been uh, sort of marking down, I think, over the last year or so as we, we favour the equities uh, over that. Property. Well, we're seeing now that the, the property market is starting to, to recover with commercial property, carefully selected properties, that is. Uh, not, not every bit of commercial property is, uh, is, is, is nice and profitable. Retail, for example, in many locations is still considered to be poor value and likely to be sold for some time. But um, a, a lot of the offices have actually done really well. The warehousing, distribution outlets, etc. have uh, done well and we expect those to continue to be the case going forward. Turning to the UK, and um, I think the, the UK will still be a, a very, very good market to be in for the next three to five years in terms of performance and probably outperformance against many of the major countries in the world. The, the benefits of Brexit, so extra money coming into the country following the, the, the Brexit debacle, but uh, that creates now the, the certainty where people know the, the, what we're dealing with here. The, the resilience of the workforce as well means that we're able to adapt and implement new strategies as we've seen through COVID, or turn our hands to, to new things. So uh, I think the UK is probably the, the, the sector that I'll be putting my money on to, to be the, the fastest growing of our major fund groups uh, over the next uh, one to, to five years. So Europe, and I think Europe will be uh, another good performer. There's some really good uh, companies that we have uh, holdings in and consumer confidence is up. The, the, the virus now has started to be, be defeated in, in many parts with the rollout of the vaccine started very slowly, but now is picking up through continental Europe and is showing good um, demand for, for products and services. The supply chain is still a wee bit wonky. It'll take a while to sort of get this uh, sorted out, but it does show that there's good demand there. So I think Europe is, is going to be set for a, for, a, for a good run as well. Looking at the US, well, the amount of money that's been pumped in by the Federal Reserve and now the, the central governments with their infrastructure deals and, and other deals coming in the pipeline shows that the potential for growth here is really, really good, as it has been probably from the year dot. Um, we've got a good uh, chunky holding in the US market and that's done as well and we'll probably continue to do so over the next uh, wee while. So a, a good place to be, I think, having uh, exposure to the US market. And finally, the, the Far East, some really good companies, world-class companies that we have within the portfolio in the, the Far East, set for, set for really good growth as long as the pandemic can be brought under control. That's the, the real challenge we have at the moment, is getting the consumer confidence back with uh, many of the consumers still sitting on a lot of cash ready to be spent in various parts of the world, not least Japan. But uh, pent-up demand will eventually come forward uh, as soon as people feel more confident to, to venture out, literally. But uh, I think it's, a, again, a, another good sector to be to, to have holdings in, and uh, we've got a decent amount of money within the portfolios in uh, the Far East. Mm -hmm.